In this week's episode of Working With Apps, I want to show you how I use Scrivener. Hello and welcome to episode 7 of my Working With Apps series. My name is Carl Pauline and in this week's episode I want to take you on the second part of my writing process and to show you how I use Scrivener. Now I have been using Scrivener for such a long time. It's probably one of those applications that I've had on my computer I think probably since 2008, 2007, I can't remember, somewhere around there, maybe 2009 actually, because that was what I wrote my first book in. Now my first book I wrote in English and it was translated into Korean. It was called Story Presentation and that was published way back in 2011. But since then, any time I have written a book, I've always used Scrivener. Now, to be fair, these days I tend to do the, the initial writing and all that sort of stuff in Ulysses, as I mentioned last episode, because I just like being able to write in Markdown, and Ulysses is a wonderful application if you are a Markdown user such as me. But when it comes to publishing the book on Amazon and in iBookstore and in PDF format, nothing beats Scrivener. In fact, actually, even my whole editing process really is done in Scrivener because I love the way that it lays out the pages, the chapters, and how everything actually works within Scrivener. It is a fantastic application. But to be fair to you guys out there, before anyone starts leaving comments for me in there, Scrivener really is very much a pro app for writers, particularly if you're writing long form documents, maybe very long 30, 40, 50 page reports, or indeed books like I do, that's where Scrivener is fantastic. If you're already using Microsoft Word or Apple's Pages or Google Docs, you know, Scrivener is not going to replace that for the short form documents. Scrivener is not really designed for that. It is described as a word processor, but it is much more than that. Really, it's for writing books or writing scripts for movies or plays or something like that. But as I say, I've been using it certainly since probably 2008, 2009, I can't remember exactly when, but I absolutely, I just couldn't write a book, I don't think, without Scrivener. It's such a great long form writing application and I just want to go in and show you how I'm using it or how I use it to create a book because I have a new book coming out as many of you who've been following this channel probably know, Your Digital Life 2.0, the second edition, pretty much a complete rewrite of the first edition and this gives me a wonderful opportunity to show you how that is developing. I have a publication date now, which is the 11th of December, so that book will be published on the 11th of December. So I am very much into the final stages of the editing process now. Okay, so before we go into uh, Scrivener and I show you how I use it, just want to say if you like this video, please click on the like button below, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Okay, let's get into Scrivener and I'll show you how I use it. Okay, so welcome to Your Digital Life version 2.0 uh, being published on December the 11th, 2017 for those of you watching this episode in 2018. Okay, so this is how the, the user interface of Scrivener looks like. I have to admit, it is not the most beautiful user interface out there, but that for me is not the point. For me, the key to uh, using um, Scrivener is essentially this binder section down the left-hand side. This is why I love this particular application and it's why I create all my books in here. Now what I can do, and just to give you an idea of how many words, I can actually click on the draft here and then I can go up to my projects and I can get 
my project statistics. Now this is something I love doing because it needs to see, it has to calculate things. So you'll see my, the, the beach ball, the revolving colored beach ball running around. But this is just a great way to start you off. It does, my usual goal for number, word numbers, and yeah, I haven't used this on my Mac for, on my laptop for a long time, because usually I'm doing this on my iPad. Scrivener, by the way, is available on the iPad, which was fantastic. I think that came out last year. So as you can see here, I've actually got 57,635 words of this book written already. My target is usually between 50 and 60,000 words. There's a quite a lot of diagrams going to come into this uh, book this time. So uh, this is going to be quite a few pages. So at the moment it's looking at 170 pages in a printed version. It will be a little bit more than that once I've added in the, uh, the diagrams and the illustrations. But anyway, one of the reasons, one of the ways I'm going to, uh, I want to separate this book out this time is to actually put this into sections. So I've got introduction, the system, goals, email, case studies, which I will actually spread out throughout the book. This one here to allocate, I've got a lot of actual things here which have been edited, but I haven't decided where I'm going to put them yet. So these are all in here, which I will deal with as and when. But they're all edited and ready to get allocated. I haven't decided where I'm going to put them yet. Um, but basically what I do is uh, when I'm creating a document, here we go, we've got it in here. What I like to do though is I like to click this function here which takes me into full screen. You can see I've got it in very, very big text because I don't want to be distracted by email or anything else like that. But I have a lot of options here. I can actually reduce the width of the paper. I can bring it down like that. Uh, I can have the paper position in the center. I can actually reduce the text scale. This I've been using on my desktop. so. Uh, I tend to have it bigger, but usually probably around about 125 is good enough. And what I can do is I can just get on in distraction-free editing, basically, as I do now. Um, there's all sorts of other options that I've got here. I can actually re fade out the background like this, but I usually have it on full screen so that I can just focus on the bit that I really want to focus on, which is the writing. Um, and then... We can, I can just go through these various chapters and I can put them in wherever I want to put them in. I can add notes. So I've got a note here, which is new, uh, need. It should be need to review whether or not to include uh, this as a separate book or include it in an appropriate chapters. Um, so I've got a few things that because the workbook that I might be putting into there, I haven't decided whether to use a workbook in there. Uh, using your technology, there's all sorts of things in here. The tools, so I've got the various things that you can use for tools. Um, so this is a really, really good um, example of how I create this book. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, yes, you can do all that in Ulysses. Well, that is true. And that's why I generally write everything in Ulysses first. But the the key to the, the power of Scrivener, and as I said in the beginning, if you're not writing a book or any long form reports, then Scrivener is probably too much for you. But the key for me is when you go into file and you go down to compile. Compiling is essentially now how you set up the book for exporting. And I am not ready to export this yet, so I haven't actually set it up uh, exactly how I want. But I can go into creating format in ebook, ebook with parts. I've got so many options here. Uh, to create uh, iBooks author chapters. Yeah, I can create this in as many different ways as I want. And I can create PDFs. I can create anything I want to be able to create the kind of book that I need. And this is why I use um, uh, Scrivener for this because, so I've got here compile for print, but I can go down here, Rich Test Microsoft Office. I've got all these. I this is why ebook ebook publisher. This would be how. Oops, uh, this is how I would actually compile it for um, ebook. Would be how I compile it for iBook Store. Dot Mobi is how you compile it for Kindle Store. So there are so many different ways that I can open or export this file, and that is main, the main reason why I use Scrivener. But also when it comes to editing. It is just so easy to drag and drop. Like if I wanted to put Sir Richard Branson into the system area or in here, I can move this around wherever I want to move it. And it is absolutely fantastic for that sort of thing. So I can just move the pages around where I want them, how I want them. And as I say, I've been using this since 2009 and I honestly don't know how else I would actually go about 
uh, compiling a book and then publishing a book. So this is basically how we're doing, uh, how I'm doing on my um, Your Digital Life 2.0, the second edition. And it's all being edited in Scrivener and will be published on the 11th of December. So that's in about four weeks time. So I've got a little bit of work to do between now and then. OK, if you have any questions about Scrivener, please leave them in the comment section below. As I say, this series is not about how to use these applications. If you want to uh, learn how to use them, there are so many tutorials out there. To do. Uh, Scrivener has a whole tutorial section of videos that you can watch. So I, I don't think I could do any better than those. But these are just about the applications that I am using on a regular basis. OK. Hopefully you found this interesting or useful. If you have any questions about how I'm using uh, Scrivener, please leave them in the uh, comment section below. And it just remains for me to wish you all a very, very productive week.